Hey there, it's the Ranch Ferry, and I've got my tinfoil hat on today. There's an old saying, or a lot of people use it, I don't know who actually wrote it. You can have your opinion, and you can have your own opinion, but you can't have your own facts. So I decided to put my tinfoil hat on today and discuss kinetic energy at zero and 36 yards. It's pretty astounding when you use math, elaborate on facts and stuff. Still in a dull area, but you can see our little setup here. Got the weight on top. We just cut out a cardboard box. Take some paper on the cutout. Got the garbage can with the chair. You know, you can do this at home. You can do it anywhere. Just start testing. Sweet. I love this thing. Put the curls on the side. Get the bow up for some style. All right, so the truth is I've been fishing like crazy. Bass fishing. Caught a 10 pounder, caught a six the other day. Went down south with Ernest Cisneros and caught some snook and some redfish. It's been a more whooping time. So I decided to study kinetic energy loss from zero to 36 yards. I'm gonna take this off because we left the tinfoil hat world. So the greatest weakness of any kinetic energy study that you see on the web and a lot of the yammering out there and people saying, that this stuff's crazy, them have air is crazy, there's no way that works, is because your bow is a constant kinetic energy machine and the projectile doesn't make that much difference at launch. Here's a graph. This is the same subset of arrows that I've done before. The high speed is 294, and the low speed, the 700 grain arrow, is 212. Probably, y'all should probably ought to know that. I do know that the fastest one is 294. It's me shooting a 65 pound bow with super aggressive cams and a six inch brace height. It's the fastest thing I've got. Call me a weenie or whatever. I don't know, I'm not buying a bow faster just to have one. What you see here is the launch kinetic energy. We'll see this with any bow that you decide to test and add mass to the shaft or add point weight and shoot it and calculate the kinetic energy at launch, which means right here. Last time I checked, I haven't shot a deer quite that close. The closest thing I've ever shot, I think I shot a black black antelope with six yards with a longbow. And I've shot a couple of deer at 10, but I've shot very few animals right there. So what happens is when your projectile, let's get a projectile. When your projectile leaves, the second it shoots off the rest, it's slowing down kinetic energy values are going down. Once again, here's the graph of launch kinetic energy. You can see the arrow masses from their six different arrows and it is what it is, okay? Once again, it's just math. You can do this math yourself. However, if you wanna fight with the math and math is agnostic, you need to look at downrange kinetic energy and how much impact you're putting on the target for your arrow system or, or you're lying to yourself. Everybody who says that's the launch kinetic energy, no, nothing changed. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> Not much. Well, the heavy arrow actually has more kinetic energy. Shh, don't tell anybody that stuff, but it's not substantial, right? 
it's not 40 percent hey if you like this content and the scientific stuff i've got videos there'll be uh links in the description to my studies of the same topic at 60 yards where the ke gets even worse and worse and worse for the really really fast light arrows for you long range guys once again it's just math but the science is the math and the math is the science so let's just continue with this discussion at normal deer ranges but you might find out that you guys that want to go out west and long bomb are delivering a projectile on target that's got some pretty pathetic momentum to continue pushing the arrow going forward look in the description for the links for that and uh you know thanks What I did is we'd already measured it. We had it at 12, 24, 36, 48, and 60 yards. I dissected out of that group the 36 yard, you know, kind of a long deer shot. A lot of people shoot 20, 36 is 40. We didn't do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, because there's only five th uh, units of measurement we can put into the lab radar. So we wanted to get 60 yards in the original set. So we broke it up into five pieces and that's why it's off. So it's 36 yard kinetic energy. Here's the graph of the kinetic energy at 36 yards. So the top line is launch, pretty consistent. The bottom line, I wonder why we see massive improvement in downrange kinetic energy as the mass goes up and the speed goes way down. I already knew this. <laughs> Again, if you got one of these on and you're hiding in a hole and your opinion is good but you want to make up your own facts this stuff's hard to fight with because it's math algebra equations and pretty well studied stuff and shot through a lab radar and lab radars don't lie they're stupid they just do what they're told even with me shooting it and i'm not that smart all right hang on yeah, I apologize now. I know my presentation style is a little wacky. <laughs> so I already lost about half the audience because I had the tinfoil hat and I was acting crazy, but it's super fun. It's just math. For those of you that are still here, here's a normal spreadsheet. And I'm going to leave it up while I'm talking over it. And I'm going to try to go slow, which ain't my deal. The left-hand side, you can see the mass of the projectiles. Okay, just so you know, we walked up the spine as well. So I bare shaft tuned them all. And the, the lighter arrows are like 350 spine. And then as we added mass, I actually bare shaft went to 300s and then went to 250s to make sure that the arrows were flying as good as they possibly can. So my data was pretty clean. That is completely possible. It takes a lot of work to do that. A lot of people just shoot a 400 spine arrow and put a giant point on the front and the thing's bending like a banana. And I don't know that the lab radar cares, but for me and the integrity of data, I wanted to have the flight to be the same. So I had the same fletch, the same brand of arrows, and then I walked the spine up and they were bare shaft tuned. Okay, that's just the way I like to roll. If you want to shoot a 400 spine arrow and put 500 grains on the front and call it good, I don't care, but it's going to be flapping like crazy and it's going to, it's going to give a little bit of a weirdness because the shaft's going to be going like this, so it's going to drag more and it's going to look weird. So I just, I won't do that. I know that that's a fact. So I had to try to get the arrows flying as perfectly as I could to keep the integrity up. All right. I promise I put the graph up. Here it goes. The left-hand column is the mass. Okay. 388, 436, blah, 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 blah. The next is the actual KE that was graphed earlier at launch. The next column is the KE at impact at 36 yards okay should you have to shoot a 36 yard shot that would be your impact kinetic energy but the next column is the net loss of ke okay at 36 yards you'll see that the 388 grain arrow lost 10 foot pounds of kinetic energy and the 716 grainer only lost six you might want to just stop the video if you know, if I went too fast, stop the video and kind of digest this because there's a lot of numbers. Once again, this is just math, man. It's a lab radar. It's a dumb machine. It only does what it's told. You tell it 
to put, you tell it how far away the projectile is going to be at every increment and it just reads the speed. It doesn't, it doesn't have a bias and it hasn't been on archery talk and having some clown mess with it. It just does its job. So what you see there, like I said, when I first got around 525 grains and was really exploring this stuff and going, man, I don't know about this. And when I still didn't believe, I started shooting through the pigs a lot, not really shooting through them like, like they weren't there, kind of. Like when I hit them right, it would just zip right through them. It didn't slow down at all. And further validation of what we're actually seeing on meat with people who've made the jump, you know, I've been preaching for years, get around 550 grains with a perfectly flying arrow and a razor sharp broadhead. My channel has sharpening videos, how to tune. We sell test kits at Sirius to get your arrows flying straight. Add some mass because we have upgraded inserts and 100 grain inserts are just standard. That's a normal, normal play there. If I could just get you to round to 550, you can see, here's the chart again, the delivered on impact this is 36 yards, go with it. The delivered kinetic energy impulse is right there in the math. Remember, we're only working with 75-ish to start. Then you apply a very low drag, very sharp, low angle of attack broadhead on, on target, and it gets it becomes a very efficient cutting tool to blast through whatever you hit. All right. That's enough of that, I guess. I don't know. I'll come back with some more stuff. There's all kind of science stuff whooping around in the old tinfoil hat. There's all kind of crazy stuff and other experiments me and the rocket man are going to try. <laughs> We're trying to figure out how to actually catch the speed of the arrow after it goes through like a pig thorax. So like get the rib cage off a ferro hog, put it this way shoot through it this way and catch the speed coming out hit you know catch it hit coming and then catch it leaving so we could then we would know if we hit a rib or in between or whatever it'd be really cool study and you could change different platforms uh the trouble we're having is the lab radar won't look this way it wants to catch a projectile flying away from it but it won't sit perpendicular so the target's this way it can't shoot this way and catch the, it's not that easy. So we're trying to figure that out, but we got a rocket man and I'm sure somebody out there might know how we would do that. Cause it'd be really cool. If you dead centered a rib, you'd have data. If you didn't dead center a rib, if it hit like this and hit two ribs and went like that or hit the de rib dead center and clipped another one, put a shoulder blade up there. Oh, it'd be super fun and really good data to help lethality. So that's that. Um, I guess I'm supposed to like say stuff uh, like subscribe and like and share send this around to people who don't believe if you get in one of them message board wars it's not going to change their mind because people like their opinions more than they like facts but you know it's hard to swallow because nobody I've ever heard the bully guys do it but the archery guys all they measure is launch and you know what? They're right. The KE for the heavy mass projectile, because a, a compound bow is a kinetic energy spring, and you pull it back to active state, dynamic state, if you want to say that, Blake Davis, and you slam the trigger, you just you rip that trigger back, and it goes to static state, and that's all it does. And it doesn't have more kinetic energy. Shh. Now, Dr. Ed, sorry. I know we're supposed to be talking about momentum. Hang on, we've got to get these people over the first hump. The worst one is kinetic energy because this direction is just not a really good energy measurement for what we're shooting, but it's common language. So, Ed, we'll get to it. <laughs> All right, I guess you can subscribe if you want to. It's still America, it's the greatest free country in the world. And uh, thanks for watching. Um, bye. <laughs>